Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, welcome back to another episode of Bad Beast Barbecue. Hey, today we're cooking indoors today, and we are going to be trying out this new craze called sous vide, okay? It's all over the uh, YouTube and all over the internet. It seems to be gotten real popular lately. Uh, we uh, wanted to get a sous vide machine and put one off for a while, and then this company here called Cisno contacted us, asked us if we were interested in looking at some of their products, uh, and they would send us something to maybe do a video on, and lo and behold, they had a sous vide machine. So when we asked them to send us this sous vide machine, and they uh, they did. And so we've used this a couple of times now. This is not our first time using the sous vide. And uh, I've got to say, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. I've done two steaks with it so far, and I was going to do videos on those steaks, but the audio was so bad, I didn't want to put you guys through that. So we'll have to do a new steak video at a later date. Um, the Cisno here is a 1000 watt sous vide. Uh, it's easy to operate. Now, I'm telling you that this thing is very, very quiet. Uh, it reaches uh, temperatures up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, it's uh, like I said, quiet, uh, and we've had no problems out of it at all. So, uh, so far, I'm impressed with this. Um, and you can get this off of Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description block where you can check it out and uh there's one thank the guys at Cisno for sending us this and for letting us check it out okay <clears throat> so what we're going to do today is we're going to be doing uh a tuna yellowfin tuna steak okay so uh, let's go ahead and get this prep work started and we'll show you what we're going to be doing all right guys so what we have here is a one and a half inch thick piece of uh, yellow fin tuna that we purchased from the uh, seafood department in our local uh, grocery store the other day okay and uh, we're just gonna do this simple all right uh, I'm going to be seasoning this uh, with some Pilsen Latino seasoning okay now from what I can tell from seasoning my steaks is that you don't need a whole lot of seasoning because the uh, seasonings that you put on your food that's being sous vide, it tends to draw the seasonings into the meat uh, very well. So uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and season uh, this up. So I didn't put any uh, oil or anything on it. We're just going to season all the sides. And this Pilsen Latino seasoning is from the good folks at the Chicago Spice House. We're still using tons of those seasonings that they sent us. And uh, I want to thank those guys out there for trusting us to represent their seasoning company in a positive light. They have tons of stuff out there, so you go ahead and check those guys out, okay? All right, so now that we have that done, we're going to go ahead and put a little cracked black pepper on it. So let me go ahead and change, and, and change gloves. All right, so we're going to add some cracked black pepper on it. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of pats of butter to the tuna, like so. And we're going to vacuum seal it. So we're going to go ahead and vacuum seal it, and uh, we're going to get our... Uh, cooker ready and I'll show you how we do this so don't go nowhere all right guys so I have my uh, food saver bag here that we're going to put this in and I still have two more pats of butter so what I want to do is I'm going to put these pats of butter down in the bottom of the bag then I'm going to sit the tuna on top of these two pats of butter so I'll have butter on top and butter on bottom this inch and a half thick piece of, of tuna, like such. All right, so take this glove off, and we'll go over here to the food saver and get it all sealed up. All 
All right, guys, so there you have it. We, uh, we're vacuum sealed, and we're going to go ahead and stick this in the sous vide. So let's get the sous vide machine ready. All right, guys, so we got our water in our uh, container here. I bought this off of Amazon. I put the link on the bottom for it also in case you're interested in uh, getting one of these. This is like a 12-quart. 12 quart container for sous vide made by Rubbermaid. Okay, I got the water level in between the max and the minimum lines on the sous vide machine. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. All right, and uh, right now it's always seems to always keep the previous uh, temps that I had in there because right now it's set at 130 for two hours, which is what I cooked my steaks at. But for this here, we're going to uh, cook this at 125 degrees for an hour and a half okay so we go ahead and get this set up all right so our temperature is set and uh the current temperature of our water is 68 degrees, so when it gets up to temp, it'll start beeping. Let me know that it's time to put the food inside of it, and then when it's done, it'll beep again, okay? So, hey, hang around. I'll show you how we put the food in there, and then we'll have to just wait for an hour and a half to see how this sous vide comes out. So, hey, don't go nowhere. All right, guys, so the sous vide machine is uh, at 124 degrees. And you can hear it beeping. It's telling me that it's within 60 seconds of getting two temperatures so I can go ahead and put the food in the water. So here's our yellowfin tuna. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the water. Now because I don't want my food to float to the surface, I weigh it down. This is just a, a meat tenderizer that we have and I usually weigh it down just to keep it submerged like so. Okay. All right, so we're going to come back in an hour and a half, and we're going to sear this off on the Kenyan uh, Indoor Electric Revolution Grill to sear both sides. Then we're going to cut into it and see if we can get a perfect piece of yellowfin tuna. So, hey, don't go nowhere. All right, guys, so the beeper went off. It's been an hour and a half, um, and the tuna is, is ready to come out. So let's remove our weights. All right, and pull out our tuna. All right, and I'm gonna open, open it up, it up in this container so all the juices and stuff won't run all over the counter. All right, so there it is. I can see a lot of butter and things, and like they always say, it don't look too appetizing now. But we're gonna go ahead and sear this in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and pat this dry. I think I'm going to put this on the cut on the cutting board. All right. And we're going to pat this dry so that we can try to get a good sear on both sides. Right. It smells good though. I tell you, it smells fantastic. So I can't wait to taste it. So all right. So we're going to let it sit there for a minute while our uh, Revolution, Kenyan Revolution electric grill gets up to temp. i got to set it on high, trying to get it to the hottest temperature that I can so that we can go ahead and sear both sides for about a minute. So let me go ahead and change the camera angle for you, and we'll go ahead and get this started. All right, so our Kenyan grill is up to 450 plus degrees. We're going to go ahead and put this on there for one minute per side. Nice sizzle. Hey Google, set one minute timer. Sure, one minute starting now. A little closer lid. I know you can't see it off camera here, but the, the close up should give you a, a good one from the other camera angle. All right, that's been one minute, so let's see what it looks like. I'm going to flip it over for another minute. And we'll slice into it and see what we get. So, hey, don't go nowhere. All right, guys. So, here we have it. Seared for one minute on each side. All right. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to give it just a, a 
couple of seconds to rest, and then we're going to go ahead and cut into it, all right? All right, I got my knife, my blade here. We're going to go ahead and cut into this and see what we got, all right? So... Now, actually, I think I think it might have been just a little more done than I would like. This is probably how the wife would like it. It's falling apart, so uh, it's not slicing as nice as I thought it would. And uh, like I say, it's pink on the inside, but it's not uh, it's not like medium rare, like a uh, like you would think, like a steak or like tuna is supposed to be. But let's go ahead and uh, taste the flavor and see how that turned out. It smells very good. I can smell the, the seasonings that we put on it. Okay. It's very good. It's, it's moist. I can taste the Latino seasoning in it. But um, I think maybe... It's a little more done than I would have liked it. And this is my first time doing yellowfin tuna uh, or fish at all in the sous vide. So the flavor is good. The moisture is good. The seasoning is great. Um, searing it on uh, for one minute on each side uh, may have uh, brought the edges down further on the inside than I wanted as far as cook goes. But it tastes very good. And I think maybe... Mm, I think maybe 125 might have been a little bit too much for this fish. Maybe that should have been somewhere around 110, 115. I'm not sure. Um, from what I read online, I, heard the internal, I saw the internal tip was supposed to be 125. But that could be a little too high. So if you guys know what the, the, the temp, perfect temp for yellowfin tuna uh, for a sous vide is and the length of time, hey, hit me up in the comments block and let me know. And we'll try this again. But I think the wife will like this because this is about the consistency that she likes. Okay. Well, that's all we have time for tonight. I think this is going to be pretty good. The wife just really enjoyed this. I want to thank the folks out at uh, Cisno uh, for sending us the sous vide machine. We're going to be using this all, uh, over and over again. I really love the steaks when they come out of here. I did an Omaha steak. As you guys saw, my wife bought me some Omaha steaks for, for Father's Day. And I did some Omaha steaks in the sous vide, and it came out perfect, man. Just with straight salt, pepper, a little butter. And I cooked it to 130 degrees internal temp, and it was perfect, okay? Um, I think in order to sear some of this stuff, uh, instead of putting on a grill for a minute uh, each side, which could ruin your uh, whole sous vide internal temperature, I think I'm going to go ahead and invest in a searzol or one of those butane uh, torches to be able to sear the outside of the meat without uh, ruining the depth of which the... Uh, the cook go, you know, the, the, the depth that goes into the meat to overcook your internal um, temperature. So, uh, also, I want to thank the guys out at the Chicago Spice House for the uh, Pilsen uh, Latino seasoning. It was very, very good on here. That's why we didn't use any salt because it is, uh, it has a salt content to it. Uh, we just used it, cracked black pepper, and some butter, and it came out fantastic. The only thing else I could have done on this that would really have brightened up the flavor was to put a couple of slices of lemon inside of the vacuum pack with the tuna so that the lemon flavor could have been infused inside of the tuna. But for the first cook, it's not too bad. Just a little overdone, but, you know, as we use this more and more, we'll get better and better at it, okay? Uh, also, I want to thank the folks from uh, Kenyan Grills. If you're interested in a Kenyan Grill, hey, check them out. Now, this is a great indoor grill for doing stuff inside. And I'd say it's been extremely hot outside uh, to go outside and cook uh, lately. So we've been using the Kenyan quite a bit, especially for breakfast and things of that nature. So, well, that's all we have time for tonight. Hey, like we always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. If it's fire, then damn it, there just might be a barbecue there. Hey, I'll put the contact information for all these gadgets that we use tonight down in the description block if you're interested, okay? Hey, and as always, hey, we'll see you guys around the smoker.